Welcome to my lecture today. This lecture is about a cellular automata, as I mentioned. In today's lecture, I am focusing on cellular automata. Here I listed two uh, spellings. It can be spelled as cellular autom automaton or cellular automata, but it's not cellular, cellular automation. Be paying attention, pay more attention to this. Automaton or automata. Automaton is the singular form, and automata is the plural form. I, will, I am going to talk about the concepts and its application in transfers. Then I want to talk about another model called cell transmission. In the first look, these two models are very similar to each other because they both divide the rows into sections or cells. But actually, they are very different if you explore more into their essence. So the two models. The focus of today is cellular automata. And I, by the way, I'm going to talk about cell transmission. I want to show you how they are different. So history of cellular automata. This was invented by two scientists, Ulam and Von Neumann, in the 1940s. I think you are familiar with these two names uh, if you uh, review the uh, previous lectures. In the, beginning, in the beginning, cellular automata was developed for Ulam's project for crystal, uh, crystal growth, and is for Von Neumann's project of self-replicating systems like a copy machine, self-automatic uh, copy machines. The basic idea of cellular automata is the space, the space to be studied is going to be divided into a grid of cells, a lot of cells. And each cell has a finite number of states. So a grid cell, a grid of cells, and each cell has a state. And a state has a finite number and this grid of cells can be of different dimensions. So we can have one dimension, two dimensions, or three dimensions, for example. So remember, cellular automata has a grid of cells, and it has, each cell has a lot of states. Cellular, trans, uh, cellular aut automata in transport, uh, transportation doesn't, uh, can date back to the 1990s. This is the basic idea of uh, cell automata in macro simulation. I think you have already seen this, this figure before in the first lecture. By using cell automata, the rows are divided into equal length cells. The length of the cell is defined to accommodate the shortest vehicle, for example, passenger vehicle. And a bus, a longer vehicle, can, can accommodate two cells. The basic idea is very easy. And after dividing the grid of the link into cells, we define the speed of each vehicle. The vehicle speed is very, very discrete. It can be one cell per, per time step, one cell per second, two cells per second, three cells per second, like that. And as I mentioned, this is a grid of cells, and each cell has its status. So what's the status of these cells? For the empty cells, the state, state of it is empty. So we can use a number to indicate that, for example, minus one. So this cell's value is minus one. For this, this cell, it has a uh, vehicle occupied. So its state can be the vehicle ID. All right? So this cell has a value of vehicle ID. This cell has a value of minus one. And according to the vehicle ID, we can find the, all the attributes. We can look at all the attributes of the vehicle that occupies this cell. All right? In the 1990s, Kai Nagel was the first person to propose this car falling earth proposed the cellular automata model. And let's talk about the car following procedure first. It's very simple. It has only four uh, procedures. The first thing is acceleration. So if the current speed of the vehicle is less than the maximum speed, you will accelerate. 
for the accelerate, we mean the speed will act will increase by one. So in the if currently the speed is three cells per hour, then and as speed is less than maximum speed, then the next in the next time step, the speed will be four cells per hour. Easy. The second logic is slowing down. If the speed is greater than the frontal gap, then it will decelerate. So if the speed is four, but the frontal gap is three cells, then the vehicle will decelerate according to the frontal gap. So there will be no collision. The third thing is called randomization. In this randomization process, the speed will be decreased by one with a probability. For example, with a 30% chance, the vehicle's speed will decrease by one, one cell per hour. Then it will become motion. Each vehicle will move forward using the speed. How many cells, cells per hour? All these four rules comprise the whole of car falling model in cellular automata. So you will see it's very simple, it's easy to very easy to implement. And it can avoid collision because of this the, the second step. But it's very simple, it's very crude. So we cannot expect it to very realistically replicate the, <coughs> the, the truth. Alright? This paper was published in nineteen ninety two. And remember this name, Najo, Chai Najo. In the first paper, they only talk about the car falling model in cellular automata. Two year, uh, four years later, in this model, in this paper, written by Rickard. Actually, this paper was written by both Rickard and Najo. That was the second author. They proposed a lane changing model for cellular automata. The first thing is, in the lane changing model, vehicles will move sideways. They move to the left or to the right without moving forward. After this lane changing model, they apply the car following model. So the vehicle first decides if they want to switch to the left or switch to the right. If it switches to the right to the left, then the vehicle, then the cell on the left of the vehicle will be occupied. So it's so So if we have two lanes, if we have cells, and if this is the vehicle, in each time step, it first decides if this is empty, and if it, this vehicle wants to change left. If it does, then this cell will be occupied by the vehicle. After that, they implement the car falling model to move this vehicle forward. So the vehicle's trace will be like this. So it's not directly, it's not directly going this way, but to the left, then forward. It's also simplified. Now in this paper, they created three conditions to decide if the vehicle wants to change to the other lane. So take a look at these three conditions, and this one is not counted into because it's a randomized process. So condition one, the gap ahead in the same lane which is the frontal gap, is less than a threshold. L, L is a parameter. So the frontal gap must be, slow, uh, must be lower than a certain threshold. Then the lead gap, do you remember lead gap, what it is? I think it's the lead gap means the gap between this vehicle and the leading vehicle on the other lane. The lead gap must be big enough, and the lag gap must also be big enough. So see, here are three conditions. These uh, L, L0, no, LO and LO back, these things are parameters. If those three conditions are satisfied, then this vehicle can change to other, the other lane. Three conditions. And the fourth condition is called is a random number less than a probability. So this is some kind of stochastic. Stochasticity in it. Do you have any question about these lane changing conditions? Frontal gap, lead gap, and lag gap. Check the three gaps. They should satisfy all these conditions. And then they 
added three kind of characteristics to this model. Let me introduce them one by one. Symmetry. If the this characteristic is symmetry, that means the left lane and the right lane are identical. Then you will not consider uh, you will consider the first condition for both left to right and left to right movement. If no, if we say the symmetry, that the network is not symmetry, it's not symmetrical, that means the left lane is different from the right lane. In this case, for changing from left to right, you will not consider the gap ahead. What does this mean? No T1. T1 means the frontal gap must be smaller than something. For left to right, it doesn't consider the gap, which means whenever possible, whenever lead gap and lag gap are satisfied, the vehicle will change right, no matter how the condition is on the left lane. Understand this? So for left to right, it doesn't consider the frontal gap, which means it doesn't consider the traffic condition on the left lane. But for right to left, you will consider T1, consider the traffic condition. And in this case, it's not symmetric, symmetrical. Understand this condition? This characteristic? The second characteristic is called, called so plasticity, which means this number. If this number is equal to 1, and this random number generator will always be less than 1, then if this is 1, then this condition will always be satisfied. So there will be no stochasticity. If we want to add stochasticity, then we make this smaller than 1. <coughs> then it will be random, the result will be random. The third characteristic is called backward casualty. Take a look at T3. T3 is a lag gap. The lag gap should be larger than a threshold. If we, if we set the threshold to zero, then the lag gap can, will always be greater than the lag gap. Then T3 will always be satisfied. So if we say no uh, backward casualty, that means the vehicle will not consider the lag gap. It will only consider lead gap and frontal gap. Any question for these three characteristics? But the basic idea is using these three conditions, frontal gap, lead gap, and lag gap. Now, let's take a look at the cellular automata's time space diagram. This is the time, and this is the space, and vehicles are traveling that way. In this